Well, this is it. Namibia, probably one of the world's greatest landscape opportunities for photographers. And this is what we came for, guys, the Fish of a Canyon. So this is the view of, of the canyon that most people see. Uh, I've just panned through and showed you the, the first stop, just about 300-400 meters from here, this point, and then the point over there on the horizon. Um, so we're a bit late, it's about 10 o'clock, I think we filmed it or photographed it half past, half past 9 or half past 10. Um, and you can see the shade, or, or the, the, the sun is making some shade uh, in the canyons on the, on the right hand side. There are some clouds that's uh, that's building up some fleece clouds that's building up on on the horizon on that side um but we had some good clouds this morning but they they burned away and you can see there as well they they building up so you can choose to have a um you know a depth uh, very deep from foreground to background into the clouds if you want there's not too much contrast between the 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 sky up in the uh, the, the the light up in the sky and the light down below Although it's about three stops different, the the, the dark um, soil versus the the light and, and the and the clouds. So on the right hand side, I've picked this side over here because it gives you some depth. The shade might be a bad thing, but it's a different image altogether than the, the normal shot. If you if you look on the left hand side, you'll see there's there's very the sun shining right into the crevices, um, and you don't really pick up the depth of the image over there. It's it. It looks good, but you don't see. It's where you where you, where you uh, build in some contrast, or the shades on the right hand side. As you can see the curves, and you can see the layers and how deep it is, and it gives you a, a bit, or it gives you much more uh, a depth um, and dimension in the image. So I've isolated certain shots up towards the right, came right in to just below um, this um, edge over here. At the bottom, there's very good lines at the bottom that draws you in that draws you in your eye in towards that center image uh, that center um, rock over there so you got two uh, two lines of that ridges at the bottom going down then you got cross rock ridges which which plays with the eye it's what we call opposite and then if you look further down you'll see there's a bit more lines going towards that rock over there with another nice C curve, which I try to get in the bottom of my image, leading to that. And then what I wanted this is uh, another step further, as you can see that there's another layer of, uh, a big layer over there. Then there's a gorge, and then you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 teeth as they accentuate the way or, or, or draws your eye into the center C, which is one of our secrets. Um, with um, with rule of composition is is the C's uh, curved C's and the S's, and here you've got a couple of C's. You've got the major C in the center. You've got lines leading into that C all along, so it accentuates the C, and then some some cross lines, some opposites, um, horizontal and vertical lines, and the shade or the sun, the angle of the sun just creates um, some shade, like I said, to actually identify those ridges if the sun came from the left hand side into that we wouldn't have seen that um, the the lines and the opposite of the lines and all of these um, rules of composition that we that we want C's straight lines leading lines leading lines into the C S curves at the bottom there's a S curve and there's lines leading into it so so I've I've isolated some of the some of the shots. I didn't go in too much with the with the long lens. I've got the 24 to 70 Nikon, and um, most of it were on on 35 mm to isolate certain strong points from a compositional point of view, um, and then some wide angle. What's 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 um, what's absent in this situation is you got this empty reach right in front of you over here uh, the ledge and there's no foreground so so if there were um, some blue bush or something right on the edge here it would have created a very nice foreground 
The other big problem of the canyon is, is you can't really see the dimension. It's just, this is massive and it's the second largest canyon in the world besides the Grand Canyon if I'm not mistaken. Um, and you can't really see the depth over down there. There's, uh, there's tracks of the animals, the mountain, mountain zebra and ostriches we've seen. I don't know what else there. Maybe Rebok um, that wandered down below. But, but that's, a, that's a very huge distance. And you can see how the potential of, of fish over, um, of the canyon um, from a photographic point of view. Um, if you look further down, you'll see how uh, everything has been eroded at the back there. So it's not just the canyon. There are massive opportunities for photography further up. And then when the sun comes up, you can see that that gorge over that, that mountains over the other side will have a lot of ridges that will play with, uh, with dimensions and so on. So, and as you go along, all along to the right hand side, you'll see, you'll see massive. I mean, for about 10, 15, 20 kilometers that we came, all the way up there beyond this flat area over there is, is a lot of dimension and a lot of opportunities. Um, I think I think if I fly over this with a, with with a chopper, I'll identify at least ten spots that would be that would be absolute world beaters. Um, it would compare to the Grand Canyon, um, where we would find a quiver tree, for instance, on the on the ledge or quiver trees on the ledge. A bit further down, it's absolutely awesome. But this is it. Um, he, it always looks a bit monotonous. It looks um, a bit one or two dimensional, and monotonous um, in images I've seen. Um, images where that clouds that's building up there if the sun maybe sets and we could be here for sunset that would be very nice lit but of course th that'll be very dark so you'll have to stack images um, you know fr from day to night or, or, or play around with with various layers which we, we, we will not be the same um, we would like that that beautiful Grand Canyon type shots where that orange plays down and maybe reflects down from that from that river which is just a few puddles from here it must be about 200 300 meters long and and quite deep the pools that are just uh, standing it hasn't had big rains it should have had big rains by now it's not packed with photographers or tourists we had one guy standing here I can see 400 meters down there's one other vehicle and there's one towards the right so so there's not a lot of interference and of course you know it depends on how how you accept heights and so on this is quite eerie I can feel a few cramps somewhere in my anatomy so while we were talking um, the clouds are getting more and more you can see across there over to the left there's very very good lines but it's making shade as well there's um, a shadow um, on that mountain which can give a bit of, I'm going to shoot it before that mountain on the opposite side gets sun again which is now and then the, the cloud and I'm shooting on ISO 100 of course because I want to blow up all my landscapes it's the it's the D810 that I, that I have with the 24 to 70 and what's happening now is the sun's coming up higher the sun is at this angle over here so it is starting to give shade on that left hand ledges there you see there's some shadows that were not there before. It was just clear and there's no shadow. So we're getting a bit of depth in the left hand side as well. And although it's moving towards 10 past 11, the midday, we're not going to be phased. I've taken some of the best shots ever in the in the desert of here in the midday sun. What we have is, is you can see that the mountains on the other side is now shaded and there's much more shade. It's much softer diffused light. We always wait for that in the midday sun because it makes it better and there's shade coming. So I'm just going to shoot uh, I'm going to shoot a few shots before that goes. You see over the right hand side as well, more shade, sun over there, and a very good clouds are building up on that side. It's a bit hazy on the horizon, but there's white and then there's some blue. So let me shoot this. Um, this is exactly what I talked about earlier. What happened to me in Sources Flares is at the middle of the day, everyone was is busy leaving because the light's bad. But look at that gorgeous shade the clouds creating it's softening the lights like a diffuser and there's still some light that brings out contrast so so all along you get the centerpiece all along you got shades so it was actually perfect now now and the 16 all on the on the 810 i'm doing a time lapse um the clouds playing very nice and but 
um, absolute super look and here you get the feeling if if you don't get that wow orange sunset or sunrise canyon what you have here is you probably have the best light to actually light this canyon every curve is is now highlighted not too much sun but a balance between shade and sun so I, I want to emphasize again the fact that and I, and I only realize that when I'm here now if you if you look at my program on the on the um, foundations of composition we talk about leading lines leading lines meaning leading lines into either straight vertical horizontal or or arrowed like in the case of of the canyon that accentuates a specific point uh, C curves and S curves and specifically when they're repeating repetitive C curves S curves absolutely beautiful for composition and 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 light and dark here you have light and dark you have light uh, sandstone and dark shade you have light sky so that's what we talk about opposites we are opposites we mean rough and smooth so here you've got rough areas and then you've got some smooth areas um, uh, down in the plateaus as well absolutely fantastic um, saturation or color we don't have much color here we have a bit of green in the center of the fish river where the fish river actually runs so so i don't have i don't have i can do a black and white um uh, on on a very good plugin which we'll do and i've shot two or three of them with black and white not necessarily this ones but we'll try this it's got a Ansel adams type of shade shade to it and the problem here is we're standing right on the right on the edge the slippery slippery stones all along uh, you see the the camera is, is a bit tilted which is stupid but i wanted to get as far away as possible because the 16 mil is catching the outcrop of the rocks right at the bottom here and it and it not it's not that it's not aesthetic it, it also does not really bring in dimension as a foreground um this is just this is just too massive to have one piece of small um, foreground um the time lapse will go for about about an hour um I'll shut it on every five seconds because these clouds are not moving fast fast when we use two seconds on the very fast it's moving sh slowly but the shade also this move exactly the same as speed as the clouds so the five seconds should be fine um, and I'm rolling it for about 12 seconds um, the time that's just to use in the in the program as well we will see that um, if if I could zoom in and show you how certain peaks are standing out because there's shade there's shade um, there's shade on that little peak that stands out on that flat plateau over there and there's a piece of outcrop that is now it was in shade now and now it's in sun and but bottom you have got shade uh, framed with shade all along so and in the back again there's like shade so so that makes that point stand out as soon as the sun appears on the on the plateau on the other side again then you can't see this it sort of merges into one flat line so what you have here is you have, you have the you have the shadows here you've got a big shadow now, which is which which block it, blocks it. But we'll we'll try and shoot it now with the shade. A little um, the 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 river and the little corner on the left hand side on top. So yeah, here you can see this uh, leading lines. But with the leading lines, is it gives us a bit of a C curve, a repetitive C curves. Which is exactly what we're talking of the sea curves are going down so on the sea curves there's also a ridge and a ridge over there which is opposite and that lines lead us further into the image over there over there you've got a big sea curve and the sea curve goes straight into into um, the the river look at all the different ridges lines that go down into that gorge over there that flies uh, that flows into the fish river and you see how the sun starts playing um, over there there was no sun and because of the sun's pointing on that point over there you can see that it accentuates it and at the back there's shade if that was also sun you wouldn't have seen this ridge so it, that's the depth i'm talking about now, everywhere you look you'll see there's lines there's the rocks that 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 slip down there there's another point down there there's another c curve over there another c curve over there and you've got nearly a bit of S's over there. See how beautiful that ridges are now in the sun and shade over here. So you've got depth all along. So with regards to the equipment that um, me and Harris brought with to the Fish River Canyon, 
in, in Namibia or the I Ice National Park, Ruchtersveld, Transfrontier Park with South Africa, is uh, the three tripods, Manfrotto's. Um, as you can see, the older version, the heavier one, but it's got um, the, the cushion f for cold weather and so on, and also for slip, non slip. And that is the, the, the more recent, lighter one. And this is the, the lightest one that I bought the other day, very light. And it seems to be quite quite good. What I'm doing is I'm doing a time lapse on that with the with the Nikon D810 and the 16 millimeter fixed lens. Uh, and what I've done is, is I've I've fixed it on I fixed the focus on manual and locked the ISO and uh, and then focus it um, on on f7, which is quite a quite a good stop for for such a wide angle lens. The D500 always worth because it's. It's got a, a very extremely good low light capacity and so on, but we, we do the video stuff on that. And of course, the odd uh, cropped uh, images that, that I took um, that you saw that I just filmed um, where we isolated certain areas. And on that, it's got the, the, the 24 to 70 millimeter Nikon, Nikon lens. Good optic all along. So if you don't have this, the fixed lenses, then, then that, is, that is a good replacement for about three lenses. And and we use the the iPhones extensively for 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 cutaways, uh, for B rolls and so on. And we do the time lapse, the moving time lapse lapse with the with the um, with the gimbal and the iPhone X. And we got um, uh, two more iPhones that we do B rolls and stuff with. That's with regards to the camera equipment. That one is shooting along. It's a bit risky. It's standing right on the edge and. Um, it is not like any other place where that's there's actually shut. This goes from here; it goes right down. Um, so let me take it to the to the vehicle. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like towards the back. On the it's just, of course, there's always coffee, dune coffee, and in the camera bag is the remote trigger for for dual um, dual flash. Um, the SB. The SBM um, 910 flash. The other one is in the other bag. Batteries. Um, the 24 mil fixed. I forgot I've got this in the car. 24 mil fixed Nikon. Also very good. I'll slap that on now. Various batteries. Um, cable, cable release, extra batteries, cleaners, and and yeah, batteries. Um, memory uh, memory cards, lens cleaning tissue. Let me take one out. I need it, and all sorts of small accessories for flash on, on, um, and so on. Batteries, extra cards, small batteries. Um, I found that this is this is about the smallest bag I get away with because the 500, um, uh, this lower pro bag, the D500 plus the 16 mm plus the 24 mm plus a flash plus the remote flash plus the 810. Um, and the remote triggers all fit fit in the small bag. The others that's that big, they also fall full in the car and so on. But you know, I, I, I tend to not get it that in there. So, so I think there's still a, a lot of um, advancement that they can do with 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 bags with bags specifically for specific gear. And of course, we we brought the the, the Terriers along, second most reliable vehicle in the world. Harris pushes it out with me inside, or we put it on the on the raft donkey can pull it out and you just need sometimes 4x4 four four, otherwise it just cruises past the the cruises and the land cruises and all the big shots in here um, because we're out here for the whole day um, you'll see a, a, a various cables that are busy charging the remote uh, uh, the charging devices um, if we hit the camp again or the road there's no power um, in the back here We've got the sleeping bag. The sleeping bag tends to be very good isolator. If I'm in the desert and it's 40 degrees Celsius, and I cling this 10 degrees um, uh, minus 10 degrees sleeping bags, wrap it around it. You know, uh, very funny. Two o'clock in the afternoon, you still feel cool inside. So that's just uh, what we call Kloof Beersum in Afrikaans. That's the 200 to 400 mil with the 1.4 extender, the the um, the medical kit. Um, the bag with the computer and all the remote drives that we dump footage on similar bag over there. We've got um, um, Remote or mobile um, voice recorders or sound recorders and All the accessories the microphones and stuff that goes with that um, 
alien. On top of the vehicle, we got the tracks if we get stuck, but it's it's uh, it's actually just there to to match the yellow with the yellow of the Nikon and the gel camera sticker because, like I said, this doesn't need anything to pull it out. At the bottom here is another uh, bag with another D610 Nikon in, uh, chargers uh, and all the other things, batteries, extra flashers um, and all the small, small stuff. There's another lens over there. Um, extension cord that I've pulled out uh, when we stop at a place and there's a power point to charge the, the, the fridge and the freezer we plug it into the plug and overnight it can charge not like now i don't think it's charging now although it's on i think the cosmos probably on an extra extension cord coffee dune coffee a bivy we can slap that on now and have some shade a axe extra a cup this boy he should be out at the boys they, don't, they put it only on their vehicles not on mine you can also use it as a reflector as you can see look at that all this magastus for the ceiling for the GoPros on the side on the windscreen um, in here is a bag full of coffee remote or oh, small little um, gas canisters that can boil water manual grinders for coffee and I've got in here my dune Nomab specifically roasted for the Nomab desert over here brought with my espresso machine that just always goes with Two stretches on top. First, we're going to take a nap now and a spare 20 litre fuel canister. 50% shade, and we've attached my bivy that I've said this morning I we're going to use. So I've packed in to make some sun, and we're going to take an afternoon nap and see what the weather does. Seems like it's boiling up on that side. Maybe a nice sunset, but there's some rain on that horizon over there.